So, Namanarayan, everybody, uh, and welcome to one more session of In Conversations uh, with Samiti. Today is Tulsi Viva, so it is very appropriate that we pick the topic of uh, talking about uh, Tulsi and its uh, significance uh, for us. So, uh, Swamiji, um, are you there with us? Yes. Your video is done. Oh, yes, there you are. Yes. Swamiji is there. <laughs> yes, please. Namo Narayan, Swamiji. Namo Narayan. Namo Narayan. So, Swamiji, we'll get uh, started uh, with the Shanti part and then we'll pick up the topic for today. Thank you. Please sit in a comfortable posture with your hands on your knees in Dnyan or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, both the legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Normal spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. Let your awareness be on this for some time. Shift your awareness now to your eyebrow center, Brumadhyaya. And at the Brumadhyaya, visualize a brightly burning, radiant, Jyoti. Let your awareness gravitate towards this experience at the eyebrow center. And maintaining awareness of this experience, we shall chant the mantra Om three times altogether. Taking in a deep breath. Oh, oh. Om Savana Vavato Savana Bhunakto Savirian Karavahai Tejas Vina Vadita Masto Ma Ved Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Hari Om Sat Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the floor, guys. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move your palms away. Open your eyes. Aryom, that's it. I want to write. Thank you, Swamiji. Um, I think we will uh, get started uh, with the topic for today, uh, Tulsi, and uh, you know what is the significance of Tulsi uh, for spiritual aspirants uh, specifically, Swami. Today is Tulsi Viva. It's a very auspicious day. Or, gamo me 
तुलसी जी की बहुत धूमधाम से शादी होती है अब शहरों में तो लोगों को कभी कभी मालूम होता है नहीं होता है लेकिन गांवों में तुलसी जी की बड़ी धूमधाम से बड़ी श्रद्धा से शादी मनाते और तुलसी जी हमारे सभ्यता में अनेक शताब्दियों से बहुत महत्वपूर्ण स्थान रखती टुडे इज तुलसी विवाह एंड इन द विलेजेस इन इंडिया इट इज सेलिब्रेटेड विद ग्रेट गस्टो एंड तुलसी हैज अ प्लेस ऑफ प्राइड इन इंडिया एवरी हाउस देर विल बी अ तुलसी you would not have any house in the rural areas especially where there is no tulsi she is the companion of the house especially the lady of the house and there are multiple reasons why that is there but you might know it or you might be surprised that this system does not exist only in india even in other countries in the older civilizations this system has been prevalent if you go to greece you will see that every house has one sapling of basil that is that has been seen for long time of course now with uh, modernization and uh, cardboard apartments and all that uh, that might become a little bit of a problem but always to see is present she is like the benefactor of the family tulsi ji is known as the queen amongst the herbs hindi mein to tulsi ji ko aushadhiyon ki rani kaha jata hai and we can see now lots of research also is going on and they have found out that tulsi has got amazing medicinal properties and we can go on and on about tulsi but i would like to relate to you a live story a live event which happens and that is the event which happens at rikhia peet तपोभूमि ऑफ गुरुदेव स्वामी सत्यानंद जी वेन स्वामी जी केम टू रिखिया यू ऑलवेज हैड अ तुलसी इवन इन मुंगेर आश्रम बट वेन ही केम टू रिखिया ही एस्टैब्लिश तुलसी जी एज द अधिष्ठात्री देवी ऑफ द अखा एंड शी ही सेड दैट नाउ यू आर द चीफ medical officer and every day morning evening swami ji would himself do the puja of tulsi ji and he said he made only one prayer to her as long as this body remembers the name of the lord please keep this body healthy the day this body forgets to take the name of the lord i don't want such a body take it and when swami ji came to rikhia he started the panchagni sadhana and panchagni sadhana is not a simple sadhana you have fires on all the four sides the fifth fire is the sun temperatures go up to 80 90 
Sometimes they had even touched 100 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. And Swamiji would sit there comfortably doing his work. And he has many times mentioned that this comfort is the grace of Mahatma. He said that because when Swamiji started his sadhana, another aspect of his sadhana was with every breath he had to take the remember the name. So he was doing mantra jap with every breath. Breathing 15 times a minute, 900 times an hour, 21,600 times in 24 hours. And so Swamiji said that if you are doing a sadhana for two hours and then you miss something, next day you can cover up. But here, there is no way you can cover up because there are only 24 hours in the day. So then he said that he played a trick. He invited and established Tulsi Ji and he made a prayer to her that I am starting this sadhana and uh, when Swamiji started his sadhana he was past 65 67, 68 or 70 at that age when everybody would like to you know lead a comfortable, contented, relaxed retired life that is the time when he started his sadhana this sadhana specifically his entire life is and Swamiji said that I never had any problem not even a single sneeze or a cough or a fever, nothing complete good health and once Swamiji said that uh, once it so happened that uh, he was getting, I think he was getting late for his, uh, that's what Swamiji mentioned. So, uh, perhaps he was getting late for his uh, sadhana or, what, or period of uh, Panchagni. But he said that, Ek bar hum unko pranam karna bhul gaye. Unko smaran karna bhul gaye sadhana ke pehle. Aar us samay, aise lagta tha ki jaise ki agni ki mulapad bilkul aakar ke when Swamiji forgot to pray to her, he said that it appeared as if the fire is all focusing on him. He was doing sadhana every day. Not that he was just, you know, he did sadhana only one day. He was doing for all six months. From Makar Sankranti to Karka Sankranti, six months, the hot six months of the year. When the temperatures as it is, Go beyond 45-50 degrees Celsius. In such times, you would sit in under the sun with fires on all four sides. And he attributes his good health to the blessings of Tulsi. And this is what is very essential. As long as you consider Tulsi as just a plant, then yes, it will just have some basic medicinal properties. But when you bring in Shraddha, then the higher component starts coming in. If you remember, when Lakshmana had been hit by the arrow and he had gone unconscious in the war. There was a herb which was only available near in the Himalayas. So Anumanji had gone and brought it back. But there was a problem because he could not plug the herb. The herb has to come on its own. Otherwise the effect is gone. And he did not know how to do that. So, being Hanuman, he just got the whole mountain and brought it there. And then the Vaidya went. He did. 
the necessary activity what had to be done made the proper prayers and the herb fell if you look at it as a story yes it's a story but if you look at it from a slightly different perspective the use of mantra the use of at a specific time and the sadhana of that physician all together brought in a higher quality otherwise he could have just brought about 20 30 of those herbs and he could uh, the physician could have picked it up but the effect would not be there so these plants as we'll see they have got a higher dimension and when you are able to connect to that higher dimension there is a change within us so and that is why every day in the evening tulsi ji ke samne mein deepak jalate what is deepak why do you have to light a deepak why can't you just have you know nice uh, focus lights and beautiful uh, uh, coloring etc etc because deepak is the indicator of the representative of pranic energy you just see in a house every day in the evening you just put dia light them up in the evening and observe after one week the energy over there changes you haven't done anything different just light deepak in the evening hi evening because that is the time when there is a transition and when there is a transition then there is an upsurge of cosmic energy and it is this cosmic energy which is best so when you do that and you worship tulsi she has the ability to control modify regulate our entire neuro hormonal systems and it has been seen that when the mind of the person goes off and that person keeps on putting the water to the tulsi the tulsi starts wilting away if the tulsi is placed and there are lot of negative energy the tulsi will wilt away you might give all the perfect perfect things but at the same time if you take proper care and you have that connection with her then you see how she comes up because she not only works of by taking the leaf of tulsi but her presence itself has a very powerful impact and it is this impact the vibrations of the place it creates an aura of positivity in and around the place that is the significance on a physical dimension it is medicinal on an emotional dimension it allows you to connect with a higher reality and on a spiritual dimension it opens up newer vistas that is the reason why to see is considered so very important that in traditional homes you will never find a house without tulsi and in the evening light will be lit at the tulsi that's very very important because she has the ability to balance the entire aura the human health and activate spiritual vibrations so that is the significance and that is the importance of tulsi in our vision and our life thank you swami ji so swami ji uh, quick 
question related to that, like when we are placing Tulsi in our house, is there a specific place that we should keep it or um, it, it does not matter? And um, is it like the east corner, west corner, you know, anything specific like that the, or it does not matter? You see, what is most important is that you need to form a connection with her. East corner, west corner, north corner, south corner, Vastu has its own significance. But that is not the be all and end all. I know of many people who have been fabulously successful. But if you look at their places, nothing according to Vastu, but still they are fabulously successful. Does not mean Vastu is not correct, but there are higher dimensions which have greater greater significance than what we are speaking about. That energy needs to be connected. So when we are beginning, doesn't matter, just start off wherever it is. Place a tulsi and start lighting a diya, agarbatti and every day in the morning and evening, just go and do pranam to her. And stay there for a minute. And what Swamiji used to say that you offer water to her, wait for after offering water, you wait, you do pranam, and after a minute or so, then you pluck one leaf and take that. According to botanical principles, also, it is said that when you water, then there is a trigger which takes place and some uh, some of the uh, active ingredients come up and that takes some time. So you wait for that to happen and then you pluck a leaf and that leaf, just take one leaf of Tulsi every day. That makes a difference in our mind, our general health and also in our spiritual orientation. So, do that. But please remember that Tulsi is a very sensitive plant. It needs sunlight. If you don't have sunlight, she will certainly not flourish. And you have to be very careful with her roots. Many times people put in a very small pot and she becomes big and uh, there is no scope for her to grow. So, if you are putting in a pot, give her space so that she can grow, the roots can grow and then she will. So, you know, the basic points need to be take, taken in consideration. That is more than enough to start. Great. Uh, so, moving on, Swamiji, then, uh, can you tell us more about Tulsi Viva, the special auspicious day today? So, why is it considered auspicious? What is the speciality about it? At Rikhya, Swamiji used to himself perform Tulsi Viva. And Swamiji told a beautiful story about that. He said that uh, he had established the Tulsi. She was there. And uh, once she got some fungal infection. And so they wanted to put medicines and all that. Swamiji said no. He placed shaligram over there. He placed dood grass over there. And he did the Tulsi Viva of Tulsi with shaligram. And then every year this started. And Swamiji said, the moment I did that, soon after the fungal infection disappeared. No medicines were put. Nothing was changed. Only this one thing was done. So, there are of course lots of stories about Tulsi, uh, how, uh, why she is so sacred and why she is so uh, dear to Vishnu, especially Sri Krishna. Those stories are there and they have their own significance. But in our times, if you look at it, 
there are two uh, poles of energy and when these two poles of energy are present then there is a healthy interaction amongst the two and the energy comes up and when the energy comes up the pran shakti comes up there is good health so basically that is the scientific reason for tulsi diva and then there are higher reasons also tulsi is the dearest of shri krishna do you know that story of uh, the significance of tulsi and shri krishna bahut achhi kahani hai shri krishna always used to like tulsi and tulsi and tulsi so all these uh, queens you know they they did not really understand why is he so saying and then one day what happened was satyabhama in a pit of jealousy or uh, interpersonal rivalry or whatever she said to narada that i will whatever you want i will give you but please bless me with whatever she has requested so narada being the mysterious one said please be careful no 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 whatever whatever Are you sure yes 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 okay so he asked her to take the sankalpa that she will give whatever so then uh, he asked for please give shri krishna to me it was like oh my god nobody because narada was a devotee of shri krishna and how can he demand that shri krishna is given to him as his assistant that's what he demanded and um, there is a long story around that but then finally it was said that uh, let's do one thing we uh, we will not give shri krishna but we will give something equivalent to shri krishna and narad he was very clever he made a hut in the palace itself and made shri krishna do all the work internally he also must be suffering that he is asking god to do but that was the leela of bhagwan himself because he wanted to bring out the truth so he said okay uh, that drama went on and everybody was uh, you know being tortured rukmini was uh, being tortured my lord is sleeping on the ground how can that happen so she also started sleeping on the ground my lord is eating uh, just small morsels so she also you know everybody was uh, nobody was happy because shri krishna was working like the assistant of uh, narad going getting water going uh, fetching uh, firewood uh, cooking everything and this uh, went on for some period of time after that then when they could not handle it any more then they said what can be done what can be done and then narada said that okay well if you really say so let's do one thing you don't you don't want to give krishna give me something equivalent to him what what okay yeah whatever i will so what will you so satyabhama said i will uh, weigh krishna and whatever is his weight in gold that much gold i will give you so be happy and uh, she also got a chance to show how wealthy she was so you know the tula was made the balance was on one side shri krishna said on the other side she started getting all her gold the whole thing went up but still not even slight movement in the balance what to do so she got all her reserve 
that didn't work. So then she got her ornaments. Everything finished. So she started crying. That time, the information went to Rukmini. Then, Sri Krishna is being measured. And she said, how can you measure him? And she took a leaf of tulsi and went and placed that tulsi on top of everything else. And the moment tulsi was placed, the balance shifted. And that went down, Sri Krishna's part came up. That is the significance. That is the importance of Tulsi to Vishnu. There is a story about a demon Jalandhar and his wife Vrinda and all that. That is very true. But why is it important? Because she reflects the qualities of Krishna and she did not demand. To see when she was Vrinda, she did not demand. She was quiet. She was accepting whatever is happening. She never complained, but she was always connected to the Lord. Just as the Murli is always with the Lord, in the same way, Tulsi was always close to his heart. And therefore, the presence of Sri Krishna is very, very close wherever there is Tulsi. So she becomes the easiest means to connect to him. And that is the significance in our life. You see, uh, it is good that we um, do the festivities, we do everything. That has its own nice, fun, frolic, joy. But below all of that, the basic point is the connection between the plant and a stone. Shabhidram is a stone, but it is not any stone. It is a stone which comes from a special animal and it has got gold stuck to it and there is the shape, specific shapes and those shapes are the shapes of Sri Vishnu's Shankar, Chakra, Gada, Padma. So, it has the vibration of Kaligram is very much in alignment with the vibration of Vishnu. And that connection can be made. So we can connect to Vishnu through Shamitra. Similarly, Tulsi is the feminine aspect. And she also takes us to him. You have the positive and you have the negative. If you have electric wires going and you just use the phase and don't use a neutral or what is called as the positive and the negative, then the circuit is not complete. For circuit to be completed, you need phase and neutral, positive and negative. Shiva and Shakti, yin and yang, male and female, all those parallels are there. That, enacting that outside, so the symbology goes within and we at some point of time realize the significance and make that change in our life. That is the significance of Tulsi Viva. And of course, there are subtle and higher realities just which need to be experienced, which cannot be spoken about. So therefore, for us, this is something which is important to know. If we are serious about purifying ourselves, if we are serious about aligning ourselves with the higher dimensions, 
if we are serious about exploring the qualities which are there within us, then Tulsi Viva is one of the simplest and very effective means of connecting to that divinity, which is interconnected. And on an ecological level, when you are doing Tulsi Viva, you are worshipping nature. You have a stone, one aspect of nature. You have a plant, another aspect of nature. You are worshipping them. When you worship them as gods, how will you even think of cutting them down? You won't. So that is the samskara which is given to us. Remaining in tune with nature. That, in my mind, is the most significant aspect of Tulsi Viva. Thank you, Swamiji. Uh, if anybody has any questions uh, for Swamiji at this time, yes, Prabhaji. Uh, but you're on mute, Prabhaji. You can unmute and ask the question. Swamiji, in the evening, you said, na. So my sunset time, we are uh, keeping the eye and all. Then after lighting the lamp, so we uh, we should not come uh, uh, Pradakshina to the this Brindavan that this one thing is called Brindavan no? where Tulsi plant is planted. So evening time, night or evening after that, we should not uh, not come Pradakshina to uh, Tulsi Ma because there are many De Devi Devatas there coming at that time. It is told like that. Like that. So if, if we go there, uh, take round something, if, because as you said, it is lot, uh, pranic energy, a lot of pranic energy is there. That is what, one thing. Another thing is 24 hours she is uh, giving us oxygen. Is it right, Swamiji? Yes. Yes. 24 hours, day and night she is giving oxygen. That is as a purification is their entire Please, wherever Tulsi plant is. I did not understand your question. Uh, evening, see, we are offering water in the morning. And we, in the morning. sun god is there, sun is there yeah. raising. So we offer uh, water and pray sun also and come Pradakshina to the, uh, this one, uh, Vrindavan. Vrindavan is that the pot, wherever yes. you have know, said. And in the evening, we offer the, uh, the keep dia, light the uh, this dia. After that, we do namaskar, and we are not supposed to take uh, 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 pradakshina right. to Tulsi Vrindavan evening time. We tell like, me, tell me. It is uh, when I asked what is the reason. So all Devi Devatas are coming there, and uh, you should not. Uh, Keep your uh, feet there. You stamp on the energy that is around. It is stored like that. Yeah. In the and you, see, you have to also understand that. Uh, see, uh, many things in our traditions are told in a symbolic manner. They say that after sunset, the mm. plants sleep. At that time, we should not disturb them. So is it that actually the plant is sleeping? The plant is, that is not the thing. But the energy of the plant has gone internal. That is not a time to disturb the plants ah. because the energetics won't be beneficial for us. In the same way, once the sun has set, should not come. No, I is not beneficial. So now, uh, you see, when we have to speak to the masses, you tell these scientific principles, they will listen through one year and out it goes through the next year. But when you speak of Devi Devatas, and if you do it, they will get angry. Yeah. Then out of fear, people will do it. But below that, there is this logic. You see the reason. Yeah. So for spiritual aspirants, we need to understand that understand. so that not for an intellectual purpose because then what happens is we get into intellectual. No, intellectually it doesn't make any difference. 
capture it. But it allows us to connect deeper. We have always to remember that is something which is very Yes. Same way, Swamiji, Ashwat, Ashwat tree, na? Ashwat, people tree. That's a unique also you should not supposed to take uh, production. Same, same reason. Same reason is there. Same reason. Because you see, these trees, they have got lot of psychic powers also. Ah. And when there are psychic powers, then you have to be very careful. If you have electric wires, which are with insulation, you can, you know, even if the, uh, there is electricity, you can pull a wire, push a wire, etc. But the moment you take the insulation out, you have to be extremely careful. Mm. Even the slightest mistake can have big spark or burn everything down. So when we are working with higher energies, then you have to be more and more and more sensitive. Second thing is, yeah. when you connect with bhakti, then all your mistakes, you are prompted, you are educated by the divine to rise above. Once a uh, very senior Swamiji from the Niranjani Akhada, he was telling that you see, uh, there are rules when you have to talk to your mother. You can't kick your mother. You know, touching your leg to the elders or anybody is not considered good. But you look at a child, child is on the arms of the mother and half the time the child is kicking the mother. Ah, huh? who is that? Now is that, is that not uh, pap? Because there is a Different connection. Connection. That connection, the moment you have that connection, then mother takes care of you. When we are babies, mother takes care of everything. Once our khopri starts coming up, when we start growing up, then she says, okay, beta, tum apne se khada ho jao. Lead your own life. Spiritually also, when we connect as a child, mm. then she grants blessings as a child. And so whatever mistakes we do out of ignorance, out of limitation, not that, oh, okay, so now mother is there. I am like a son to the mother, so I can do anything and everything is, uh, no, no, mother is uh, very smart. 10 times smarter than you. And she is able to give a big tight slap also if we try to be over smart. But that slap is not out of spite. That slap, if we understand it, is so that we can stop going from in the wrong direction and come on the correct direction. So, there are lots of rules. But best is to connect with the heart and go with simplicity of the heart and then you will on your own discover all the rules because these rules nobody came from uh, planet uh, Mars or planet Venus or uh, Jupiter or any other planet and told that do this, 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 this. No, all of this was discovered because it is energetics. In the same way, we also discover the truth. That is most important. So, with this, let us conclude today's session. Thank you, Sandeep. Please sit in a comfortable posture. Hands on your knees in Jnana or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, both the legs, the whole body.
for a few moments visualize a beautiful sapling of tulsi visualize the presence of shaligra and observe the communion between chandigram and tulsi feel the energy apa pranam tuma tulsi is the queen of healing whatever health issues we have physical mental emotional social professional lay them bare to her be innocent like a child and feel her grace showering upon us removing the difficulties showing us the way to overcome them and maintaining awareness of this experience we shall chant the mantra om three times followed by the shanti taking a deep breath Oh 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 Asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotir gamaya mrityor ma amritam gamaya स्वस्ति भवतु भवतु पूर्ण भवतु मंगल लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु ओ त्र्यंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमिव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओ शाति 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 एंड सीम प्रणाम मुद्रा तमेव माता च पिता बंधुश्च सखा हरि Ravi Swam, and see as we are speaking that place them on the clothes bags, and then, when comfortable, move the palms away, open your eyes. Hari Om, Tat Sat, Namo Narayan. Jai. Thank you, Swamiji. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Let us conclude.